hills and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance to build... There we go. Hello everybody, welcome to Long Baggers. Uh, my name's Matty. Good evening, I am Colin. Alright, I'm John. This is, uh, this is surprisingly upbeat, considering what we're about to cover. That's because I tried to catch his out by saying something immediately before we started recording and then just hit the button. Um, this episode was brought to you in association with Lee Spirits and if you're a Hips fan, I'd probably recommend now is a good time to try out their products. Um, it'll, it'll do you good, I think. Mm. Um, right. This probably isn't going to be a jovial episode just to warn everybody and I don't think anybody expects it to be. Um, John, you're frowning there as if what the fuck are you I, I was, I'm here for a laugh. Well, we were having a bit of a giggle beforehand, and I know that we were talking about like reading the room and what have you, but I still think that there's that long bangers ethos, which I think is to try and have a wee bit of a laugh, even when things are really shit. Yeah. Football-wise. I mean, there is, there is that, John. There I might think, be a wee laugh along the way. We, we'll we'll think, take it seriously. I tried to get out of the way with it at the start. But, like, if I forget to <laughs> get out of the way with it at the start, then we could get into the football and we could just be raging oh. for for the next hour or, or however long we're, we're recording. But we were talking about like had 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 Hibs won the day would have been more upbeat, but you still would have had a game to navigate on Wednesday. So it's not like we would have been sitting here going, well, this is fucking amazing. No, but if we'd at least taken care of the rain job, mm. that that would have helped to like if we'd at least done our bit. Just for once. Just for fucking once. Exactly. Um right. So for full disclosure, I had uh, I had to attend a funeral today. Um, so I I didn't see uh, the game until I saw the sports scene highlights. Uh, so I'll I'll not comment too much on the game because my what I've actually seen of it is very very limited. Uh, John and Colin, I will be leaning on a new more for it. But I think in the interests of um, sort of capturing the mood of how folk are feeling, we'll have a, a wee bit of chat about the game. But really, this episode isn't going to be so much about the game. It's going to be about what's going on at the club, the, the talking points that have come in, of which there are many, many, many uh, talking points, uh, a lot of them along the same theme, will probably dictate how the conversation goes tonight, um, and then uh, I suppose we'll see where the episode takes us. So, uh, I suppose the best place to start would be to have a look at the uh, the starting lineup. So, uh, John, I'll come to you first. Did you have... Uh, any any concerns or any any sort of key thoughts of the, the starting lineup? <clears throat> I just thought that it was a well. One of the things that bams me up about the Hibs uh, lineup when it comes out is that it's in chronological numerical order, numerical order. Of, sorry, numerical order. Aye. Um, what's chronological then? Time. Time. So I guess Always. that would be by by age, wouldn't it? Like Aye. if you were doing it like that. Aye. It's but, definitely well, sorry. like that. Numerical order. Like sorry. Like, a goal yeah. so if Wallacott was playing, you would be in the middle of that list. That's basically what we'd be saying, yeah. Ah. That's so mental. mentally mentally I'm having to rejug everything to try and work out in like a sort of recognised formation. Um and I thought to myself, we've not really got a striker there. And then I saw that LaFondry was on the bench, I saw that Venti was on the bench, and I thought, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder what the, the thinking is there. That was that was my thoughts in the lineup. Other than that, I was all right with it. Uh, Colin had uh, Mariah Wells come back in for Chiantis. That was uh, w- one swap. Um, and Yuan came in for Adam LaFondre. Yeah. What were your thoughts on the lineup? Um, I, I actually, well, so I had a nice quiet day today, right? I, I was so much in the Newcastle game at lunchtime and I was pissed about I got the alert for Fan Hub. You know that thing? Hi. You predict your lineup. Yeah. got 10 out of night. And the one I got wrong was. Um, Yuan for Laundry. So that was the only real surprise, I suppose. But then I thought, well, Mizzy hasn't played through the middle for us already as well. Mm-hmm. So it's not that big a surprise, is it? So I wasn't that, I wasn't that surprised. So I, I thought Mariah Wilford would have came in even if Triantis was fit, which I'm assuming he's not because he wasn't on the bench. Um, I still thought he was coming in to start because he second half performance last week was enough to, to warrant him. Is starting today, mm-hmm. and there's no many options. Look at it, uh, you're saying, I'm, I was saying that, and Dave, who was on your phone in the other day, I'm in a group chat, he's in, and I say, For fuck's sake, like, he's not learning anything, he's just playing the same defense. But then you look at it and you go, 
Well, he doesn't want to play Hanlon. So, we've not got any options. Nah. That is the option. That is it. So, it was... Uh, I mean, right, so we've used this phrase before, right? I think most of the time, pretty appropriately, but but probably sometimes we've overegged the pudding a wee bit. But this was uh, literally a must-win game for us, right, to get top six. All we had to do was look after ourselves, really, and, and hope results elsewhere went our way. Uh, Colin, just to talk me through the, uh, the the game, right? So just just kind of take it from the first whistle to last. What you what you thought about it and where you're at with things? So I actually thought. Uh... I actually thought it was okay, right? The game early on, I thought we were all right. We were playing some no bad stuff. The weather was the wind. The wind was as bad as it was last week for both teams, obviously. Um, probably impacted them more in that they were just trying to kick it long for the boy um, Bear to mm. run on to, and it was stopping in the wind, and, and it was catching. It wasn't getting through. Um, well, no, I thought we played. There was a couple of nice one twos and um, bits and bits and bobs they play that were was okay. Uh, Cadden had a shot that the keeper saved, went over the bar. That was a nice bit of play before that. Um, and and I think I think the stats would say at half time we're like maybe sixty forty or fifty seven forty three, and we had maybe five shots per target, stuff like that. So you think, well, it's not bad. Like we're actually, it's not good, but it's not bad. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It was it was kind of, and I thought we were the better side. Um, then we had the penalty shout, and they get it, and we scrap. Two bookings rather than what could have been a red card and a, <coughs> and a, and a penalty, I suppose, as well. Um, got the penalty, took it really well, scored that, but well, that's that. But I had other chances, though, where um, I think Yuan, particularly, was getting on the ball quite a lot, but he, his the final option, final choice was letting him down. And there was one where he had the boil at the back post, just waiting to tap it in, and then he sort of went for a shot. And, um, he had another shot in the first half as well. There was the three of them could have hit the fucking shot and he got to him and he pinged it away over the bar. And you just think, fucking hell, it's so frustrating because he's got he beats players, he's pay where he wants to be, you know, like all that kind of stuff. And then you think, fucking just make the right option, the right choice more often. Um and I know I know he wouldn't be a hips if that's the case, but at least we would get the money that I think we probably wanted to get from doing that. And he's yeah. not to do it. Um and then then you're going, so I guarantee 100% said this, 80 odd minutes, sitting in the house, uh, and Carol's gone, oh, Aberdeen score. And I went, doesn't matter, because it stays as it is, doesn't matter fuck what, uh, what Aberdeen do, the draws, the draws give them a drink. And then I said, this was 82 eight, minutes, I said, we didn't keep a clean sheet. <laughs> and so I'm thinking that, like everybody else thinks that, because I've watched sports scene, that wee bit of sports scene, they thought it was soft centres, and getting a chance. And then it's a fucking long throw into the ball. A long fucking throw. And Mark Condes is the one that he does it. And he didn't get much on it, but fair enough, he's got his head on it. Never can just good much. And then the boys wrapped it in. Like, you probably never finish a goal like that again. It was like, it was almost like the boy with, with the, I can't see his name, that scored the 6-6 uh, goal. Djukovic. Djukovic, yeah. And he just fucking smashed it. And it's flew in. And you go, wrapping it in like fucking Shearer or something. Yeah. And, um, and then you go, fucking hell, like, come on, Aberdeen, now. That's, then you're relying on some other account, because we're not going to go back and score. But Motherwell nearly scored again. Yeah. Luckily, it just fell to all the show. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's like a tap in at the near post, like, to, to actually put them in the top six and fuck us up. You know, how have we done this? How have we done this? We were, I thought we were in control of this. Only 1-0, right? We, we struggled to score, like, we struggled to... I know John's been finding stats about other teams that scored many goals, mm. but we didn't. We, we struggled to score more than two, but today we struggled to score more than one. We just needed that second. That was the game done. That because they then need three because the draw yep. wasn't used to them. And we always need we need to score two minimum because these cunts at the back can't stop the other team scoring ever. I don't know how many clean sheets we've had this season, but I, I can't remember any. But I think we have had one. But you're talking. Less than a handful. Comfortably less than a handful. John will go find the window down and tell me I'm wrong. But... You can rattle off of <laughs> 10, actually. No. Right. It, it, but it feels like we've had none. You know, we definitely have had some, right? Like, But but it feels like they're, they're a rare commodity. Like, like well, I'd love to spend the other week. Aye. Um, 
But it's fucking terrible. It's terrible. They can't, they can't defend. And even now I'm looking at it, it's just that, like we've spoken about what's a typical hip school, right? For us. That's the typical hip school against us. Mm-hmm. They've just got, come on, is it windy enough for me to chuck this that far into the box? I fuck it. Oof, because they can't build up running for it. It's been an Achilles heel all season. Uh, John, I suppose same question to you then, just to get your perspective on the, on the game. I can probably sum it up in far fewer words than Colin. For a guy that doesn't like to, to read a lot, he can speak a lot. <laughs> He asked half, me to go through the game for that day. He did. He did. For the first whistle to last, he did. He did. Uh, <laughs> first half, I thought was fairly even in as much as it was fairly drab. There was a lot of long balls. And I was sitting there thinking, how have I been watching football for, I don't know, let's say at least 35 years of my life? And in windy conditions, you still get footballers trying to fucking lump it up the other end of the park. Why are you not playing up the deck? Because when it comes to corners, they go, oh, fuck, it's a bit windy. I'll just play it, play it three yards. Um, so that was the first half. I think there was the <clears throat> the one opportunity that uh, Yuan had that sticks in my mind because I think he did everything right in terms of shaping himself for the shot. He's just, and he's stuck it in the right direction. He's got, you know, he's beat the keeper with it. He's also beaten the, the frame of the goal as well. Second half, I thought the Hibs were definitely the better side. Um, I don't remember too much from Motherwell prior to what Colin's describing. Mm-hmm. There was maybe one chance that, like one cross that sort of floated into the box that nobody has got. That was a really good ball, but there was no Motherwell player in sight. But Hibs were definitely the better of the two sides in terms of the chances that they were creating. They actually, And I think it was because they were actually playing the ball on the deck because we were playing what I thought was reasonable football. Yeah. Um, the penalty incident... It was, I don't know, it's one of those, uh, to be fair, like I've only seen it once at the time. It's been a judge to be a penalty, VR's decided it was a penalty, so you're kind of going, well, it was a penalty. Fish one. Uh, the one yeah, that we got. Yeah. yeah. I think it was a penalty, I didn't think there was too many complaints about it. Uh, Melida, I think Colin and I were thinking along the same lines, because I was going to tweet something about um, this is going to be interesting keeping the ball in the penalty spot, given the, the difficulty they'd had for the corners. But actually, the ball fucking sat there, and he tucked it away nicely. Happy days. like We seemed like we were pretty much in control. And then I've gotten up to take the burn to the toilet, and I've come back, and they've fucking scored. <laughs> and you're like... Because I think, to be like, it's not that she timed it to be right at the end of the game, but mm-hmm. it was right at the end of the game. You're thinking, well, we'll probably just see this out, eh? That was the last and, minute, eh? Yeah. And, yeah. and that, that's maybe the optimism in me. But I have taken a bit of the toilet, come back, and it's fucking 1 1. And I think by that point, like, I think Colin, you mentioned there the, the Ollie Shaw chance. Um, I don't remember that, and I don't know whether I've just had like a, I've just had a switch, switch, switch in my head went, well, that's that. I think, I, maybe, I think I've maybe turned to, to you guys and messaged and said, because a live score, the, the league table was looking at still had Hibs and sixth. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, well, as long as Rangers beat Dundee then, there was still that little glimmer of hope. And then that was quickly extinguished. So that's it. The plaster's been ripped off. We're bottom six. We need to deal with it. So in terms eight, of dealing with it. Eight clean eight sheets. Eight clean sheets. And I and four or five of them were four of them were before October. Um, so yeah, that's the pathetic, yeah. really. Aye. Pretty but it's still more than I said. Yeah. Um, we had a obviously we had the phone in on Thursday night, and it was a really good debate. We had Martin on, who was really uh, sort of vociferous in his uh, uh, suggestion that time was up for Montgomery. He wasn't the right man for the job. Um, a few folks are on the other side of the fence saying he definitely needs more time. Bottom six, top six tends to be. I suppose what you call like a bit of a benchmark in terms of minimum standards at, at Hibs. This is the second year out of three that we've been bottom six. Um, Colin, where, where do you stand on things now? Right, so we've had that conversation on uh, on Thursday, and I, th- I thought it was really lively, really, really good. Uh, certainly informed my opinion after it, like uh, and how I thought about things. Today's shaped my opinion a bit more on things. Where where are you at with it at the minute? 
So I keep coming back to John's argument about the, how often we change the manager, and 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 he's right. We keep we keep keep changing the manager, but nothing changes. So I think something else needs to change. Maybe as well as the manager mm-hmm. this time, but if we just change the manager again, we'll be we'll just be in this position at Christmas again. Right, and go and get him out. We need to send him before the transfer window and all that shit. We need a clear out. We've got a house right there left that he bought in the July, whatever, right? So we're going to be through all that again. Something else needs to be because it's the definition of madness, isn't it? Doing uh-huh. the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And, and it doesn't work. So I did ask that on the thing that to the guys who are saying keep the manager and or to everybody. Mm-hmm. Got, we need to change. Something needs to change. But not the manager. I'm being told. But what is it that needs to change? And I, I still don't know what that answer is because McDermott's no longer in the role either. And the point of directed football that we said when we spoke about it was, well, they're the static. They're the they're the person that stays. Uh, the constant the continuity. Yeah. So what is it that needs to change? Is it is it is it our mentality? Is it our expectation level? Is it um? Is it is it the CEO? Is it the fucking owners? I don't know. What the fuck do we need? We need to change something. Like it's, and it could be change players and managers plenty. It's mm-hmm. always the same shape. Realistically, right? When a club like Hibs, we're never going to get continuity a uh, manager for, for any extended period of time, right? And and ideally you want to have a manager that comes on that performs so well that somebody bigger and better comes on. Somebody bigger, right? Any better clubs than Hibs, right? Uh, a bigger club comes along and says, we're taking your manager and we're going to pay him five times what you can pay him or whatever, and it goes off to, to them and then we start again, but with somebody coming in from a position of strength rather than a position of uh, weakness. So I, I think the... I'm going to argue against arguments that I've, that I've made plenty myself because I, you do need stability and I think you need to give managers time to build something. But the idea that you have a manager for five or six years to build you know, a, a dynasty or, or whatever, it just isn't going to happen. So you, you, we're going to lose managers, whether it's after eighteen months or two years or three years. Mm. It's going to, it's going to happen. But we're always going to have a churn of managers to some extent. I, where, where, I, where I stand, John, I'll come to you in a second. I just, I, I don't see how we can accept what we've seen this season. Like, it's almost every measure that we look at. It's a defence is shocking. The thing about the Ken no scoring more than twice, uh, more than once this season uh, in the league. Uh, eight league wins under Montgomery, a bottom six finish. Is it, uh, is it eight under him or seven under him? Se- sorry, under seven under David. yes, uh, se- seven under him and one with David Gray. Um, we've we we've missed out on our season targets in the, the Scottish Cup. Now that's unlucky because we we drew Rangers right, and you know if there's a good chance if we'd got a smaller team, we would have, we would have progressed. But it is what it is. We never we never hit that target. We know how our league standing target right? so financially that the club takes a, a hit for that as well. I don't know what measure we've got because even if you look at like who we're going to sell, like who we bought in that we're selling at a profit, which was one of the club's measures as well. Like, can you bring players in? We've not got anybody that's going to have a fucking wonderful season that you're thinking, oh well, at least you know we might realise three million pound for this player or that player. We've not got well, a coach. Yeah, would have been the one. That would have been the hope, wouldn't it? And, so, and he's still making the same mistakes he made when he started coming. So you and might go, he, he, he might know. So what has he succeeded at? Like, where, where is it his, as a manager, where could he point to and say, well, that's what I came in and improved? It's not the defence, it's not the attack, it's not the results, it's not the league position. What has he mm-hmm. improved? None. So it might not be him that's the problem, but I think it's part of the problem, in my view. And, and I agree with you, Colin. Right? The, the answer what needs to change it. Who knows? But I would start there, and I would start uh, uh, along with him. I would be reviewing the CEO and the director of football as part of that as well. John, what what about you? What what about me? <laughs> uh, where, where, where do you stand on it today? After the result with the bottom, like I, I now confirmed bottom six finish. I think. I tried to ask the question. Uh, there was a, a tweet that come in from Harkis Consultancy, and it was with regards to the A League and punching down. And the question that I asked was with regards to 
the Scottish Premiership, like who do we see ourselves as most like and who do we see ourselves least like? And as part of that, like as Colin mentioned there, so with regards to the how many times have we scored three in a season, like I was curious about that as I've been yeah. curious about things that have been banded about before, like um, Hibs not coming from behind and that Jack Ross when we finished third season. So I went and had a look at that and it was it was it was it was revealing because it didn't really reveal anything at all. So Aberdeen have scored uh, three times on eight occasions this season. Motherwell, I think, had done it seven times. They'd been part of, I think they had something like three, maybe four, three all draws amongst that. Hibs have done it once. So, you know, there's no, you know, no um, try to hide behind numbers here. Hearts have done it three times, one of which was today. So I was like, well, does it really tell us anything? Hibs have scored two, two goals on numerous occasions. The problem being that we've conceded two goals on various yeah. occasions. Yeah. So there's other things like that I think of because like I'm I'm like like Colin referenced some of the stuff that I mentioned there about I, I don't know what the opposite of a a common a common denominator. Would it be an uncommon denominator? But what we've what I've described previously is you have different managers, different players, different owners, different things, mm-hmm. but we keep having the same conversations and we keep levying, or sorry, uh, accusing, the ma- uh, accusing the manager of the same things, of being like making baffling substitutions, of um, being tactically inept, he's a clown, he's a, he's, a, he's a whatever. Can it be true of all the managers that we appoint? It just like, it, it seems to me to defy any sort of logic or rationale. With regards to some of the other names that are getting banded about, Stephen Robinson at St Mirren. So, Matty, you've mentioned about uh, St Mirren this season, uh, you know, waiting for them to start kind of like drifting away, and they've never done it. Stephen Robinson uh, was appointed there in, I think it was February 2022, and he's had something close to about 100 games now. In his first season, he finished sixth. And we are saying that our expectations are higher. So that would suggest to me that we wouldn't accept Stephen Robinson coming in, even though... He's now currently what fifth in the league with St. Mirren. But I would say with that with that argument, you would have to say right. So where I disagree with that is St. Mirren. I don't think have the sixth biggest budget in the league. Hang on, let me let me let me right. carry on. Like Go for it. My, my, my train of thought. So okay. you've got Derek McInnes there as well, who's got I think over a hundred games in charge of uh, Kilmarnock, and his first season at Kilmarnock after being promoted, he was he finished third bottom. But people are saying, like, we need to get Derek McInnes and we need to get these managers that know the Scottish game. So with coming back around to your point, so and there, well, he's currently, like, fourth uh, uh, fourth in the league. But their expectations are lower than ours. When it come around to the sixth largest budget in the league, we have... <laughs> none of our last five managers combined have got as many games as those two have, give or take a couple, in yep. charge. What are the repercussions that the club faces for emptying these managers uh, financially, from a personnel point of view, from a, a fan base point of view? Because it seems to me that, like Colin says, we keep changing managers, but we never improve anything. So what else? What else do we need to do? What else? What else changes? Well, the, well, go back to what I said. You have to look at everybody and. Everything, everyone, and everything. Really, when you have a when you have a period where where targets haven't been met and goals haven't been achieved, you need to go and have a like a, a proper, honest, and objective look at why Aberdeen. So did from it, the right? so, from the the Gordons point of view, then uh-huh. they're they're the owners, and you've got uh, the uh, minority investor there, Bill Foley. What? How? Put yourself in their shoes. What do you look at? And how? And how do you approach? What the club looks like next, like how do you go about well, appointing a CEO, a director of football, a manager, uh-huh. a new playing squad? Because I think what we're talking about really, and a lot of the what we were saying about reading the rumours, got the club from top to bottom. Is that realistic? Uh, aye, it's, it's, so uh, I think what what we've looked is uh, are we looking at is a almost sustained p- period of underachievement, right? So three bottoms, uh, two bottom six finishes in three years, right? Last season. Just achieved the target, like the bare minimum target. It wasn't like our target. This was like the what would we accept as passable. So you've got uh, since Jack Ross 
had finished third, right, which is which been over uh, over performing, right? exceeded expectations. Since then, we've had uh, underperformance, 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 right? Kind of run through the club. So, to, if, if I'm Ian Gordon today, I'm picking up the phone to Bill Foley and saying, Hi, Bill, uh, Ian here, we need a bit of help. Can you tell me and just break it down in easy steps? How do I set up a, a sporting team for success? You've done it with Black Knight, you're in the middle of doing it with uh, Bournemouth. Tell me what we need to do, and I'll follow it to the letter. And you let them come in and can, do, do, can you help us out with an appointment for a CEO? Can you help us out with a sporting director? Who do you know from Bournemouth that, that could come in and do a job for us here? Get as much help for the guys you possibly can, whether it's financial help or best practice, and get them to come in. Because now we've we've gone through Ron Gordon, who had no experience of running uh, a football club. Right, great intentions, put his money where his mouth is, like what all the rest that move the club on off the park terrifically well. Right, Ian Gordon, no experience in running a football club, he, he's got a bit of experience now because he got the job at, at Hibs uh, running a recruitment team. And Colin, I think you said at the time that that was him getting primed for the for, for taking over, but that's it, right? He's, so, neither uh, Ian Gordon or Kit Gordon. I've got experience in running a football team. These these people need help. Like they they've got great intentions, and I think that their heart is absolutely in the right place for the football club. They put plenty of money in, right? No problem there. They've attracted investment. I think everything is going all right for them, apart from on the pitch, right? which is the single most important uh, thing. It's what we all turn up on a Saturday to see. So go and get help. You've got somebody on your now in the club, investing in the club, that can come in and say, right, go and have a look at what we're doing. Tell us what parts we're, we're getting wrong and tell us how to get it right. Which, by the way, is that not what they've done? Is that not what Ron Gordon done with the off-field stuff? Because yeah. he went, this is a fucking shamble, what I've been left with. What are hearts doing? They make a fortune out of this. And then they just they, they employed all the, the same caterers and then they got the hospitality and that upgraded. Because he went, this isn't good enough. And that's effectively what it is, but it's the on-field bit now, which is the bit we all really give a fuck about. So that's, that's, that's got to be the way. I think Ab- Aberdeen did it after they sacked Barry Robson is they got an independent person to come in and do a review of their operations. And they're in the process of working through the findings of that review, which I think has helped shape who they've uh, they've hired for the manager this time. But I think they're doing like a proper fucking look at everything and sort it all out. And I think that's where we need to be. Because we, we can't keep turning managers, to, to, to your, your point, John, and it, it can't always be the manager that's the point of failure so have a look at everything and, and everybody that's in a position that influences the performance on the pitch at the club should be thinking what's my role in this and what could I, what could I have done better <clears throat> and what would the what would the rebit of an independent auditor be would it be like who needs to stay who needs to go or would it be you need to stay and this is what your new role is going to look like uh, I, I would guess so. But look, let's look at everything, John. Like the whole, and and this is where the, I think one of one of the things that where I had a concern about Brian McDermott coming as director of football is because the director of football should have done that part, and I'm not convinced that's happened. Right, so it could have happened, and it's not been communicated. And we, we've talked about this before, but whenever I heard Brian McDermott talk about what he did at a club, he's sort of like in the best way. It's the most flippant way. I was going to say the best way, but it's not the best way. It's the most flippant way that I can describe it. It was a sort of like Obi Wan Kenobi figure that sort of kicked about just giving advice and was like a sounding board for, uh, for for the the various staff across the place. And that's not really what we needed. The director of football needs to be going. What's a football operation look like? And is it set up the best? Have we got the best training facilities? Have we got the best uh, equipment? Have we got the best coaches? Have we got the best coach development? Have we got the best facilities? Have we got the right people in the right places? Have we got the best recruitment team, the best analysis team that we can get? All these things should come under the director of football remit. I don't care if that's been touched or not. Now, it might have been, and I might be doing them a huge disservice, and I apologise if that's the case. They sign it. It doesn't look like it on the pitch that, that we've, we've seen any, any of that. So I, I think they need help. They, I, I think the Gordons are good people. Uh, I think they've got the club's best interest at, at heart. The team's underperforming consistently. Somebody has to be accountable for it because like, we're all accountable for stuff that we do in our working lives. Right? That, that's how it, how it works. Get help and come in and make the changes that need to be, uh, need to be changed. 
regards to the the plane squad, if you gut it, if you release them, that's going to cost money. Uh, spend the money. For spend, spend the money and debt. Just debt, right? So, we're, we're, how realistic do you think that is? I don't care how realistic it is, right? But if if there's <laughs> if if there's if there's, if there's uh, so again that's flippant, right? We've got extremely wealthy people on board, right? So not not just talking about Foley, right? But the Gordons are a wealthy family as well. This is their business, right? They they own it. They wanted to to own it, right? We never went out to them and says, "Can you please come in and take a football club?" You, you, did they play at it? If you, if that's what you want to do, and you're serious about improving it, if that's what it takes to improve it, then go and spend the fucking money in debt and have a look and say, right, see if we want to give the next manager the best chance of success. See that list that we had up when we did the extra time another week. Sit down and go. How much does it cost to, 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 to move these players on, like to pay up their contracts or whatever, so we free up budget so that the next manager can come in and go, right, we are proper, we're comfortable with these people, Ken, what they're doing, we'll, we'll use them, this manager that Ken's with is then, and we'll build a team and we'll start it from scratch. But we've spent, you know, you spend that money to, to kind of clear the decks. I think that's kind of where we're, where we're at, where we need to do it. I, 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 think, I think, how, how I else are you going to do it, John? But but that, 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 I think this is what I'm saying. Like I don't think the money is there to do the overhaul that we require. But, in the but who's, not, who's not got the money for it? Like how, how much do you think it's going to it's, cost? It's maybe, it's, maybe it might not be that they don't have the money, but are they willing to spend it? But, but like, I, a, I don't know. I don't know what the, the the contracts that these players are on. But you've got to assume. In fact, we had it up on the list the other day. There's at yeah. least two, three, and I think we've got contracts going up to like 2027 with some players. Yeah. Actually, so you're not going to get it. Right. Like, so but anybody up. that's under a year could. You could say, you know what, fuck it, there's your wages for the year, man. Because, like, in reality, they could. Whether that be something that's six million or, or no, or we ask for more, I don't know. But anybody that's on a, a 2027, you might say, we'll, we'll need to fucking put up them. Or, or, or try to sell them. Go, go to their agents ah. and say, can, listen, oh. they're not going to play here. They'll be some that are worth keeping. Ah. Well, you know what yeah. I mean? There will yeah, be, be a handful. But, but, yeah, that, that's, that's what's needed though, John, something as drastic as that, because that's what I'm saying. What do we change? Because we're saying, I agree with you, changing the manager of the time is, is nonsensical. But something needs to change, right? So there's no point in saying, well, we need to stick with the manager just because we need to stick with the manager, because it's the same old shit. We'll be here next year moaning about the same fucking thing. Because it's shown last year we only just made it in by the skin of your teeth because somebody else done us a favour. Mm-hmm. The year before, we never made it. You know what I mean? It's like it's a constant. It's a, the constant is we're not good enough. Fast forward a year, then. So let's let's assume that the the Gordons and the Foley's pay the money and pay off a bunch of players, and they pay the money and they bring in a bunch of players, and we find ourselves six next year. What then? Well, we need to look at that point, wouldn't we? Aye, the like, plan would be you wouldn't do that. That's well, the thing. Well, it's like you've got an expert in to tell you what to what to do. But then I think this is one of our problems with the idea of, of changing a manager is the assumption that things will be better. Just because right. we get a new manager. Right, this isn't just the manager. So would, would you accept it just being the same then, John? So if you say, well, let's not make any changes, are you comfortable that we're sitting <clears> here <throat> next season where, where we have the same frustrations where we're not winning games that we should win and then we're going, fucking hell, last day of the split, I think, uh, I think we'll make it. Think we'll jubilant we'll make it. Oh look, we've no made it again. <laughs> right. No, I, I, I don't know. I maybe, I maybe look at things a little bit more uh, simplistically than than you guys. Like you, like Matty, like you went off on a a long description right. of all the things that you thought were were wrong at the club there. I just don't think in in those sorts of uh, depths. What I do look at is what we've said with regards to time. Mm-hmm. We sack managers do not improve. Other teams keep managers and have finished higher in the league than us. But yeah, but I, I think the, the the point there is both Stephen Robinson and Derek McInnes had shown signs that they're improving. Right, they, they were taking McInnes the... finished third bottom. Aye. We would not. We would not. So that like you can talk so, about so, signs of improvement, but was that after never they got promoted? Promoted. So that was so, after they got promoted. Right. So, so there are we got rid of Jack Ross after he finished third because he had a bad run, which was stupid, right? I think we were all bored. We can't go back and change that decision with Jack Ross, and plus we didn't make it. The thing with McInnes, and he was, McInnes was clear that he had players that he needed to bring in, like so the players that were on contracts that were championship level players, right? 
and he was quite open about it. You can go back and listen to it. He needed to bring in, do do a bit of uh, a bit of rebuild. As Martin said, our manager came in and talked up how good the squad was, right? Uh, but but the, the 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 point I'm making is Montgomery hasn't, to my mind, shown anything. Like on, I can't find the evidence to suggest that he's making the improvements that we need to make. And that's despite bringing in players who, on paper, are worth a lot of money in January, right? So we didn't have the like. The excuse to say well, we've lost out to teams on bigger budgets than us, right? Dundee, St Mirren, Kilmarnock in that top six. It's just that it's inexcusable. So the, I think the answer then is that we need to start playing more like Dundee, Kilmarnock. But it's, it, 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 it's no like it is, why is that the alternative? Why is the alternative to how we're playing the day to play like St Mirren, Dundee, or, or Kilmarnock? Like, because there's a, a there's a a. a a running theme in the way that Hibs are apparently supposed to approach games. We weren't, we didn't, we weren't happy with Jack Ross when we finished third because it was apparently it was a weak league. We made excuses and said it was a weak yeah. league. Um, it was, it was boring. It was X, Y, and Z. We finished third for fuck's sake. Like, and I know what you're saying with regards to like that was the history. What I'm talking about is not compounding error after error yeah. after error. How like how do we do that? Well, I th- like like I say, the, the the I think we need a, a proper root and branch uh, re- review. We need to bring it, use the lean on the expertise, uh, with Foley and the Black Knight. Look at what they did with, with building the team with their uh, Las Vegas Knights, which is the same formula that they're they're uh, they put in place at uh, Bournemouth. To say tell us tell us what the formula is, we'll follow it and see how we get on. And how the, long the, does the, that exercise take? And how long does that do you see the benefits of that? audit that uh, whatever it is that they come out with. So I, th- I think you see some changes uh, quickly, like you've, you've seen at Bournemouth. Bournemouth are they better this season than they did last season. Right? The Las Vegas Knights were a new franchise. It took them what, a couple of years to, to win the championship that they were uh, they were playing in. So it's not going to be overnight, but you should see some signs of it. Like the, 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 the progress should be evident. And the now... There's no progress ever, and we're re- regressing. So we've finished worse than we did last season, right? We know that. So if if we're if we're regressing, why why persevere with it? And but this is this is something else that I have a bit of difficulty with. So we, when Johnson finished fifth, we like when I talked about like the excuses and or the way that we uh, sort of rationalised it, we scraped in by the skin of their teeth. Who gives a fuck that happens in football all the time? Aye, it does. And if, if like, it happened... Denmark won a European Championship that aye. they never qualified for. But, like, but just, so... just to throw some point for other people. If, uh, if, if we'd scraped into the top six by the skin of our teeth today, we'd all take it. And we'd all be going, well, he's achieved the top six, we'd give him the credit for it. But it would be held against them. So with Lee Johnson, uh, he finished fifth and he actually had a decent... Um, like, he got us into that Aston Villa game that we got absolutely fucked in. Mm-hmm. But he had three games at the start of the season where he lost them all and was fired. Mm-hmm. So, like, for me, like, there's, there's there's criteria here that it seems that we unwittingly or deliberately implement. So you can't finish third if the football is perceived as boring. You that, that's finish what the fans fifth. say. Jack Ross did they get Why? fired fired for his third place finish. He got fired he got fired. <clears throat> so it, it, there's like a no no what I'm a saying misrepresentation. Is are... Jack Ross got fired because uh, fired because he was failing in the next again season. Like if we were on track to finish third that season, he would still be in, in the job. My point my point is that I think what I see is that there is like a, a pin put in that says, right, we're gonna fucking bring that up as soon as things start to go wrong. Okay. Yeah. In and fact, that is, is self-defeating. Every, every club does that. And you see when Naismith loses a couple of games, the Hutch fans will be back in his case again. It, it, that's, what, that's what fans do. But the club, it's the club that made the decisions. And the so, club are making the wrong decisions. So we need, what, what do we need then? We need a, a stronger a board? Need a, a... Just what Matthew just said. Like uh, somebody to come and tell us how to run it, because it's not being run properly. But my concern with that is that it takes longer than three games for us to see see the benefit of it. So that's communication, isn't it? It's like, right, this is what we're doing and it, like, set the expectation of how long you think it's going to take. Like, 
The, 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 I, the, I guarantee. The, the, I, sorry, I need to. I need to really put my food in here and say I guarantee <laughs> that if the clubs comes out and says it's going to take us an entire, it's going to take us a season, it's going to take us six months, it's going to take us whatever, it's going to be too long for some people because they want immediate success, and I understand why people want immediate mm-hmm. success. But I don't yeah. think we have the time, and I don't think we have the money to affect so, that change. So see the people that it's too long for. Ignore them. Ignore them. Educate I, I, them I, and tell them why, and then they're still going to understand that. Ignore them. And, and just to say, like you have a bit. We know we're on the right path, and like I say, you have to. As part of that, you have to have the signs that it's working right on on that journey. Right, it's, it's not like you go from shite, 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 fucking brilliant in six years, right? What you do is, is you go shite, less shite, less shite. Decent, decent, good, brilliant, like that. Right. So you, you have that, and you hope to get to brilliant quicker than however, however, however long. But you should see the improvement. But now, even if you were to say Montgomery is part way, he's at the start of uh, uh, that journey. Shite, shite, shite. In fact, shite getting worse. Like it, you need the steps, like to to be able to see it that, that it's working, and and we're just aren't they? Okay. <laughs> anyway, well, like, we get... I, I think it's like I, I don't. There's no rational answer to that. I, I, I don't think because, like, I, I do think you're right. I do think that. I mean, it's, it's evident that the day we finish. Well, sorry, I say we finish seven. We are currently seven. Yeah. Um. I never know we may get eight. <laughs> <laughs> there's still time. There's still time. <laughs> um. What was I going to say? We're currently seven and. There's no, I think there's no rational reason and there's no rational argument that I can put up. But as Colin pointed out a couple of weeks ago, that was no rational. No. Right. Well, we well let, let's get on the talking points because we we're probably again, despite not uh, covering as much of the game as we wanted, so we can get on <laughs> the, the way, talking points. See, <laughs> when, if, uh... the, if YouTube doesn't come out with Team Matty hashtag, I will be very disappointed in all of my <laughs> YouTube subscribers. <laughs> Uh, right, so the, the first one uh, is a, a text I got from Raymond Gray, who said, uh, on holiday just now, thank goodness for small mercies. Anyway, here's my input for the latest podcast, Not Enough Room on X. He says, we got exactly what we deserve from a season of false hope and inconsistencies. There is enough in that team to be top six comfortably. The difference is that St Mirren, Kilmarnock and Dundee have a proper work ethic. I read uh, Montgomery's comments before the game about everyone being in it together and fighting for the badge. Not for me. At least five goals I can think of that have cost us points in the last couple of minutes of games. Even lower league teams would see the majority of these out. Off the field, everything is in place for the club to be a real success story. The problem for me is that every recent managerial appointment has been a project. They don't seem to want someone like Neil Lennon, not saying he's the answer, in case they upset the apple cart. Questions is required to be asked from top to bottom. I feel now that there is a real apathy with the support and that should be a big concern. Support is hard gained and easily lost. There's no getting away from it. We are a laughing stock in Scottish football. All talk and bluster, very little action. Colin, what would you have to say to to Raymond on his points there? I must be right. I'm, I'm not. I wouldn't want Neil Lennon back. Like don't get me wrong, but other than that, the the um, I think we are a laughing stock. Folk talk about us being having a soft centre and. All of that. Everybody talks about that. Every I was I watched the last five minutes of the Aberdeen game today, and the hope, and the hope that they would do us a favour, and you could hear the Dundee fans singing "Hips Are Falling Apart Again." We weren't even there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We are. We're everybody's uh, joke team. Eh? Um, Fairyland Grassmere. Uh, so could st- someone spray some of this on these feckless idiots after today's mess? This is nowhere near good enough for Burnley FC, and it is a bottle of uh, piss off. I'll be cleaning for pet owners. Um, would you be tempted to buy a bottle of anything called piss off? Aye, aye, just for the just for the photo like that. Aye. Um, <laughs> Bruce said, uh, "Long buyers, I'm sure the usual boys will keep defending him, but for me, he has to go. Bottom six manager, and we'd rather we make the move now than wait till three or four games into the next season." Um, that is the that is the pattern we've created. Eh? Yeah, like Can John I, was saying, it's. He's got three games, you know, or folk will be, I'm sure folk have said, because I was coming from the seminars earlier, lose a, oh, was it in the chats, loses a couple of League Cup games and then he's out, and you was fucking hell, then we're into a position, we go, we've moved a window, you know what I mean? So, so John, if if not now, and you say, right, <laughs> no matter what, how long into the next season, because we, we saw what happened with um, 
Lee Johnson this season, but it was three games in, three, three mm-hmm. games. How long into the new season would you give Montgomery if you were saying right, he needs time? If, if for argument's sake, we were just trundling along like we are now. I think that goes back to both of our points about root and branch exercises and not compounding the same error. Like if, if like I, I can stand here and I can say until I'm blue in the face that I think Montgomery has to say, uh, stay and he needs more time or whatever. But ultimately, there's people that are paid a lot of money at mm-hmm. the club to make that sort of decision. Um, and it is up to them to not compound the errors that they've made previously if that means that someone else needs to come in and take their position. And actually, one of the points that I was, I was thinking about before um, is as much as stuff commercially is going really well, when do have stopped becoming commercially viable? Like if they continue to uh, perform in the lower half of the table? That, that's surely got to be a concern for uh, absolutely. The, of Gordon, uh, sorry, the, the Gordons and Foley's with regards to their investments. So um, that's where I am with it. Cool. And the, see, see the root and branch thing as well. Like that that idea you, you suggested there, get somebody in that can tell us like how to run a football club. Do we leave the manager in place while that happens? If they can, okay, we have to. You wouldn't get a new manager in and then get them to the root and branch it because they might come in and go, "Come on, he's fucking brilliant." Actually, <laughs> everything about him, everything around it, that's fucked. Well, like what, I, what, like what we're telling us over I, the last week. I, I and was, that's, unless you've got somebody that you can. So, so do you know like when and I forget the Bournemouth manager's name Arola when uh, when he was available they knew that, that he was a guy that they wanted to get in so they sacked the manager who was doing alright with him uh, and, and brought him in I would imagine these guys have their eye on managers like across uh, do you know quite a, a number of uh, countries like so they're right across Europe at least Um if they had had an idea, can can you recommend us somebody that can come in that can make sure we're all right? Well, we do this exercise and maybe speed it up. Then you would do that. But if you've no Warnock's alternative, <laughs> what a fuck, Warnock, right? <laughs> all else to that. But he he wouldn't be coming to get recommended to us, would he? No. Do you know? So not uh, unless we employ Burrows. Well, we get him in first today. <laughs> Uh, Echo of nothing said uh, on 77 minutes I showed the score to my non-football supporting partner and said we're in top six right now but one of two things are about to happen either Dundee will grab a shady late goal or Motherwell will score probably with the last kick of the ball it will ah so I I think that's their fault really I mean they've definitely reversed Joan at that so you you, you think that's that's the jinx is it well, yeah. I've already done it as well by saying we never keep on playing sheet. And uh-huh. I told you I said it. Probably yep. not a kick national flat time. I think it was 82. But... Uh, 91-25. So poor game management has plagued us since Montgomery took over. 75 minute plus, we've lost draws or leads against Motherwell, Ross County times two, Hearts, St Mirren and Kilmarnock in his first game. We haven't deserved top six and now there will be serious questions around Montgomery's fu- uh, future. So th- this point about... Um, Deserve in top six, right? Obviously, we're not top six. So, do we deserve it? Like, are, are we where we deserve to be, or is it un, un, unjust um, that we are where we are? Either of you. I think that, uh, well, a league table is a league table, eh? That's it. You know, we, we've thrown these leads away, and I know there's been refereeing decisions because I've fucking been banging on about them. But, We've had opportunities that there's only a couple of points. Like it's like what how do one of the leads in mm-hmm. the top six? I mean it's no like you can we can talk about other penalties we have and we've done plenty on that. We you you look at the, the two of those games, Ross County away and today, but we're we're literally seconds. Yeah. Seconds away if we're getting three points. And do you know what? There was no urgency in the box. For either of them, right? And I can the Ross County one probably say that they weren't expecting it to go in and all that. See the day, they just took the throw in. We got we got our attacking their ten can try to clear it. There's no the no defenders are coming in to clear them out. And then when the ball lands, everybody watches the centre half hanging in the top corner and goes, think, why is nobody going to work that ball? Like the bodies on the, the line. Urgency. Whereas when Boyle Boyle had a header at the back post today that looked like he was going to go in, the motherwheel guy fucking piled over and just cleared it. And you think, like there's urgency. In the box, the same when you play hearts, the amount of blocks they do, 
they just get their bodies in the way. We, we just seem to, oh, well, hopefully they'll miss, but the style defender. Pay them less, spend the budget on something else. <laughs> get a bit more desire. Yeah. I think Bonus radi- radi- uh, aye, radical well, problems require radical solutions. The, the they need to a... get them in in the first place. Eh? That's, the, that's the problem. There, there is a. I mean, that used to be the the, the was it Jim McLean at Dundee United used to that. He like a really, yeah. really low wage and, and a massive win bonus. And he did all right. Uh, know that I would recommend get, 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 get punching reporters and all that kind of thing. Aye. Uh, football tweets said fire Monte, yes or no? So it's a straight binary choice here. Uh, one more answer for both of you. John, you first. No. Colin. <laughs> I'm still on this thing where it needs to be. Reviewed properly, and we say we change everything. I think it is. I think it's a binary answer. But the question. The guys, but the guys that are asking, that, nah, I'm not answering that because <laughs> then you get back to the fucking point. It's the same fuckers that appoint appoint the next one that's appointed the last ones, and it's not going to be any different. So, for that point of view, no. Until we change who's doing the appointment. Okay. Uh, Kaiser Sosa says, "Can we ask Foley for another six million? I don't Could think six we... million is enough." That's what I'm asking. That's your six dollars. Sixty right. million. Sixty million would be a better. Sixty million. I, I, I said I, I'd laughed. Like you laughed at me a okay. few months ago, but I said that we needed seventy-five million to make a difference. And actually, with the sort of money that you're talking about, we're laying players off. We fucking need seventy-five million. But it'll not cost no that chance. much. It wouldn't cost anywhere close. To that. But bear in mind, right? No, I'm going to labour that point. We're not getting. We're not paying all of them off. You find clubs for half of them. You know, like the, the, these are like decent players that will, that will find somewhere else to play. You might sell like a yuan or whatever for for, for a couple of million that covers that that cost, right? It's no, it's no impossible. It's no like a prohibitively expensive thing you could do it if you really really wanted to. Um, Alan Woodhouse said the last thirty seconds summed up our season. Fully expected something like that to happen, uh, although we were the better side, but didn't do enough. And it's perfectly correct that some serious questions need to be asked of Montgomery. Personally, I think he's out of his depth. Um. Fenty's plenty, Hibs these last few seasons. One, uh, new manager equals cause for optimism. Two, scraped through third round of the League Cup. Three, dumped out of the League Cup. Four, dumped out of the Scottish Cup. And five, fighting for top six finish. And it could be Giffy Greg Wallace there having a good old giggle to himself. Um, just, yeah, you just watch Family Guy. Mm-hmm. Used to. Right. The, sometimes Peter Griffin gets sort of uh, stuck with like a big stupid grin on his face. He looks like, uh, <laughs> see Greg Wallace there? Like Peter Griffin. Anyway, right. Uh, also for, for Venice Plants, he's disappointed and disinterested in the remainder of the season, but as long as it's not butchered uh, from here, I'm still wanting to end. By all accounts on the radio, it sounded like a wonder goal from Motherwell. Not much can be done about those. Uh, Colin, is there any chance of a repeat of that 2014 season for where we are now? Uh. Straight no. Yeah, no, straight no. I was checking that when you were talking earlier. But Ross County were 12, uh, 12 points ahead of Ross County. They've got six games left to play. Aye, no chance. Right. And that's uh, a playoff place. Yeah. Like, we're already safe for relegation. Um, Jeff Ashton said, right, calm down after the drive home. Thought we defended really well for 93 minutes and 30 seconds. The game should have been out of sight if Ellie makes better decisions. But it's no coincidence we lose late goals. Something has to change. John, what has to change? Uh, <laughs> I only can think we've been there. Um, I think I think so. With regards to like, so the root and branch is one thing, but with what Colin was saying there about like, if someone comes in and says, "No, Montgomery's fine," like it's like, for example, like the playing squad, could it? Could we progress or could we move on next season with Montgomery in charge, but uh, like ninety percent brand new players in? Because there have been, games. if he's winning games, but but can we start off with a clean slate next season? If you don't have, say, well, call it for your perspective, uh, Jair and uh, Will Fish play. Well, just they two. Oh, they never win. Well, just just, just as an example. No, no. Aye, well, but... I mean, like, they're the, they're two players that you've called out in particular. Uh-huh. One you say that you were better than the other one. You say yeah. he's he seems to be Teflon for criticism. Curious. Uh, so there could be other players that other people feel aren't uh, good enough for the squad. Like there's probably I questions think about be, Marshall. John, that'll be the case even when we're good again. 
there'll be somebody that players that, that fans don't like, right? There'll be there'll be players that Celtic fans criticise, there'll be players that Rangers fans criticise, maybe ninety odd percent of the games. There will be always somebody in the team like that. What I'm driving at is is it the players that are the problem with regard so Jeff's point about we defended well for ninety three minutes and thirty seconds. Like there was a couple of really good interceptions for Fish and Rocky there, but then we have fucked it at a clinical moment. Mm-hmm. Is it better players that are required? Should and I know that the argument is going to be he's not shown enough to say that he should be handed a transfer budget. But if we get better players in, does Monty look uh, Montgomery look like a better manager? If we're and winning well, games. Well, I would because we're winning games. Well, right. But did, did we bring better players in in January than we had? We so Mariah Welsh has come in. I think people agree that he's been a really bright point in that January transfer window. Marcondes is flattered to deceive. I think he scored twice. Mm-hmm. But today, for example, he probably had as good a game as he did against uh, St. Johnston last week. So he's not done well. Melida's done well. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I spoke about his shots. He came sort of dressed as an American footballer the day. They were pantaloons. I was actually uh, frantically looking for something 18th <laughs> century to compare them to. <laughs> That definitely should be mentioned as part of the match summary. I think we were too angry. <laughs> the, so, so to, to, to answer your, or to address your point, your, your question was if, if it gets better players, does it look a better manager? We've got better players in January. Has he looked a better oh, manager yeah. since then? But he's still, but there are still players there. So Marshall's been around for what? How long? And there's been questions about his goalkeeping ability for a while. Rocky Bashiri, focal point to and say, well, he was signed by accident. Colin has got criticisms of Will Fish. Cadden's come back and has looked pretty good. Uh, Abita looks pretty good. But you've got Marcondes in the middle there who isn't doing particularly well. Like, is it the players that are letting them down? But then the flip side of that question is, well, a coach would be getting better out of them. But I think there's players there that the best coaches in the world potentially or realistically couldn't get a better performance out of. I'm not sure I agree with that, John. Right. Um, but it's a game of opinions. Uh, you see Jimmy Redknapp's criticism of Casemiro in the Man United game there. No. He says he looks like he's playing soccer aid. And I thought, aye, aye, we've got a feel like that, no? Aye. aye. Um, Lemonade me like uh, Andy Grierson said, uh, good to know the next few weekends will be free for other things like watching paint dry and pissing in the wind. Uh, Andrew Brown said another shite goal to give away two or three players just stand and watch the ball bounce in the box fucking attack the thing uh, big clear out needed starting now get grey in until the summer use the next five games to blood some youngsters uh, Colin would you be using the next five games now Now that there's you know there's nothing really at stake is there, do, do we just use that to say take the players that, that, that John referenced there and said oh, let's not give them any more game time and let's bring the young boys in I well, I wouldn't see any harm in getting them some games, five games there for whoever we've got left. It's not one. It's just McIntyre, isn't it? And the goalie. Yeah. Without John. without trying to labour the point about it, it does it does actually tie in with this question about like uh, introducing youngsters to the team. So we asked the question a few weeks ago about Yuan and the number of goals that he has and the number of assists that he has. Uh, I've previously mentioned players like Joe Neal, for instance, who may not find themselves part of uh, Montgomery's long-term plans because I think Montgomery wants players who want to attack the ball. I think uh, Marcondes today is the one that goes up for the header, doesn't really get anything on it, and Newell sort of comes forward a little bit but doesn't really attack the ball. That's the difference in player that I think we need. Like, I think, Mm -hmm. and I'm hoping not to be doing Montgomery a disservice, but based on his career and some of the things that he's described, I think that's the sort of player that he really wants on his side and he needs time to move players on as we've suggested and bring other players in um, and, and I suppose for the opposite end of the youngsters with five games left, Lewis Stevenson is three games short of is it five or six hundred appearances I can't remember which, six hundred Six hundred. Uh, he has to get those three appearances yeah Fuck it, <laughs> I mean, there's there's no reason not to get the boy those last three appearances now. No, we're playing for fuck all. May as well let him jump the last time. You better get into the top four or whatever it would be. Even like it, it doesn't have it doesn't have to be stars. It no, it doesn't. Be... Just 
come off just the bench. Just get him on at the end just to kill some time, which well, ironically we're we should have done today. <laughs> Aye, we're, we're now playing for fuck off. Uh, Stephen Bell says the continued mystery of how teams seem to create so little chances against us yet we seem to concede so many goals last two games it's been three shots on target faced three goals conceded defensively we're just so porous uh, teams need to do very little to score against us it's a huge problem right Ed like and and, and that's where I'm going there like Kim and we're saying oh well the, the manager it's not about the manager that's what we've been getting told it's not about the manager it, he can only work with what he's got but he, he never changed it in January. Like, everybody knew that we need to sort the defence last season. Yeah. The start of the season, we knew we needed to clear the defence out. We had January. We never signed anybody. Brought Brian Chantis, who he played at centre half for a couple of games, decided he didn't fancy him there. Rocky came back for the AFCON. He went in there and we signed the boy Bevan, who was injured and went back injured. It was. It was it was just lunacy, really, to, to kind of know And address. Hardball, and Hardball went yeah. back well, as well. So, and, I... And, I, and I don't know I don't know how much transparency you get for the club. Is that a Montgomery thing? Is that a recruitment thing? Is that a wider club thing? Is that a director of football thing? Because surely, I don't know, like, does the director of football go, here, Nick, you know, a bit short of defenders? Well, I mean, that, that was the insane about, thing about it, is when he went, we were like really scrapping around for for centre half. I mean, we had to play centre half against Rangers. I think that was just after we we let Harbottle go. Um, but again, this is the sort of thing that a director of football is there to stop happening. Like players coming in and immediately going back out again. And could he not done the Obi Wan can be a bit of advice there as well? Well, you would like, to, to use you <laughs> and say, "Can you give a bit of advice? You've only got two centre halves. Are you willing to play?" And by the way, you're, you're having to play a 16 year old right back because we've no addressed that position either. These are not the defenders you're looking for. Because, <laughs> um, by the way, neither near the fucking bench anywhere. Yeah. Like, Miller's injured when he's not even on the bench. It's like he was starting like, a couple of months ago. And, and, and they, 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 they harm uh, to Rory Whitaker. Obviously, he, he did what he did when he, when he came in and he needs to carry on his development. But I think that that's again where you're looking at the director of football and the makeup of the squad and wondering just how we, we managed to, to get in that position. Uh, Gordon says, could write an essay, to be honest. Game management is shocking. We have no leaders on the pitch at all and haven't addressed that for seasons now. Finishing bottom six with the resources we have is simply not good enough. So much wrong at the club, it's unreal. Uh, Stephen Bell said, I also think we need to seriously consider a change before the next game. Uh, 21-22 showed uh, with the sacking of Maloney that an extra four to six weeks preparation to the next season can work. I'll stop short of saying LG was a success, but fifth in Europe is far better than this year. Uh, the half Monty said, bring back Martin, can he argue now? Player, uh, play only players sticking around next year. Get rid of now, get free signers lined up and they are going to fire Monty. Do it now. Um... <laughs> E&T has uh, sent us a YouTube channel. We'll play that. It's for last Smith and Jones. And there's a, a kind of trashed caravan there. Um, there's a wee video I saw one time, just this triggered a wee memory. Uh, a, car, a car's pulling a caravan, like, towing it, and it's come through this wee, uh, like a tunnel in between some houses. And the caravan's too wide for the tunnel, right? So it's got so far into it and it's got jammed. And the the boys at his car having a look at it, trying to figure out how to get out of the situation. Obviously, a few passerbys have clocked out. You've got your couple of folk who are giving him advice on how to get out of it. So uh, the boy jumps back in his car and just decides to go, oh, fuck it, I'll just floor it and get as much oomph as I can and try to pull it out. And uh, what happens is he pulls out the whole uh, like axle of the, uh, the caravan. So the whole top of it stays in, all the contents just fall out and the wheels come out with the car. It's fucking brilliant. I uh, probably didn't do it justice by explaining it, but it's one of these ones where you can you look at go oh, for fuck's sake. Anyway, right. Crawford Bridge said, uh, fucking horrible today. No urgency until the second half when we should have scored three or four. Yuan is a joke player. Get rid. How Marcondes stayed on the pitch is a mystery and please get shot of that central defence. Sick of watching this shite, to be honest. 
uh, Belden Lascar says, is it going to be a three-parter this week? Well, actually, we're, like it, actually, we're, yeah. we're out of time. We can, I mean, I don't even think we're halfway through the uh, uh, through the, the talking points. Alan Neil Duncan says, more late goals. Why can't professional football players just see a game out just once? How many times do we lose goals with minutes to go at the end of either half of a game? It's pathetic and no manager will change that. The players are just not good enough. Not a single one. Uh, and he's got like, like a wee picture of a Hulk there, we give. Uh, right, we'll do another couple and then uh, we're, we're kind of out of time, so we'll need to uh, to wrap up. And I think what we might talk about in extra time, we've, we've not discussed the plan this year, right? but we ideas, we'll maybe have a wee look at the the season, a wee retrospective of the season and kind of pinpoint a few of the games where it went wrong. And again, we might do that uh, along with maybe some of the talking points that we've not got to. Um, Vince Robinson, I said, I just can't see anything to be hopeful that he can turn it around. Had enough games, got marquee signings, consistently poor game management. Uh, Decal Joe, or Deco Joe, said, uh, this is clearly a long-standing, deep-rooted issue at the club. I don't know whether it's systemic, cultural, or both. What confuses me is the comment that the players aren't good enough. We have a squad rammed with full or age group internationalists. What's their issue at Hibs? That's a really good point. Colin, what, we, we clearly have good players at the club. Why are they not performing it to that level now? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I was more, and I don't know if it ties into this, but, you know, like, you know, I'm one about, like, for the leaders chat and all that. There's so many years of you, but, but actually, right, see the game management thing. I'm sure, right, they must talk about it and say, you need to fucking close games out. But that's good to then be managed on the pitch. Mm -hmm. right, by the players and it's probably no the manager there he's probably said to them Vinny fucking who's legal or whatever the instruction is right and then the players on the pitch need to do it <laughs> he's done, oh he did he's done the point he's done right but see at the day right I think the memory I'm sure we had like a free kick or something right and I'm thinking just fucking look it up the line right and let some kind of stand in a big air suit and let them fill you fill the fucking mm -hmm. whistle goes we we try a fucking like we try and play football. <laughs> we did, but like, just fucking win the game, man. Like, you see, win, and that needs somebody on the pitch to be going. Nah, 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 Dylan, no, no, fucking stop. Aye, the fuck the can can the play. Aye. giving it the camera fuck then, right? But just fucking, we take ages to take it. We could go off the park. Somebody was in my head, not we knock it in that corner there, and fucking the leader's got to stand there at that corner flag with his air suit, and that's it. That's the game done. But nobody on the pitch done that. Aye. And and that's what you need. That's what you need leaders. You don't go, no, fuck it, and control their other players. And you would think age group and full international could do that. And I don't know why they can't. I don't know why. If they were at somewhere else, they would do it. If that had been, if, if, if that's Hearts or if that's fucking Motherwell even the day against us, that, that game's getting closed in. Agreed. Uh, Ray Forsyth said everyone's really quick to say Monty out problem is the replacement will be appointed by the same who appointed him Kensal isn't up to the job uh, John based on things are going would you be um, looking to move Ke uh, Ben Kensal on as well or instead aye okay. is Kensal a recruit think... manager so think... last, last time it was with, with Brian McDermott it took, took the lead on it I think um, when you consider the uh, the sacking of Jack Ross, so that was admitted that that was a mistake. Then that mistake was compounded by appointing Sean Maloney and giving him four months. And then we brought in Lee Johnson and Lee Johnson was fired. Sorry, I, I feel like I'm a stuck record here, but there's also <laughs> been other stuff as well with regards to, so there was the comment about Lewis Miller. And, yeah, you know, driving him back, and then Lewis Miller's been touted as you know the best thing since sliced bread, and then there, there's there's other comments as well, and and I I don't know, I just I wonder how much is so there was there was the chat in the like with regards to the the, the accounts and talking about stability, but you hear that there's other comments being made about being unhappy with the style of coaching, etc. Like what is there actually a consistent message within the club? No so, idea, and 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 I don't. It, and it, this this isn't just me like digging my heels and saying you know Monty must stay or anything like that. It's 
it, it comes back to uh, what Ray's saying with regards to and, and what Colin pointed out and you pointed out as well. It's how 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 do we not compound that error if the same people are in charge of appointing the replacement and the same people that have got it wrong, what three times previously? That's why you reach out for help, isn't it? That's um, exactly. Harkis Consultancy Group said, uh, also, I'm sure he's a nice guy by all reports, but Monty is synonymous with failure. That doesn't breed success. And uh, last point for tonight, then we'll wrap up. Right, Belgium last car said, terrible, could sack Monty, but clearly the run of managers failing at the club indicates the problem is bigger than getting the wrong guy in. Uh, massive rebuild, like pretty much every season, bar a couple in the last 20 odd years. Uh, brutal. And it is pretty brutal. Like the, uh, that, the, the prospect of another, let's start again and the rebuild and all the rest of it. Like it's no, I guess, what anybody really wants to, to happen. You want to be successful, you want to be building from a, a strong point. But in, a where, way, where we're at. In, in a way, I think he started that already, the manager, because he. They, but a lot of the signings they brought in were loans, so almost like that'll see us through the end of the year. There's a lot of the boys we looked at that on extra time or something mm -hmm. recently with the list. How many are out of contract at the end of the year? You'd expect them to go. Hanley Stevenson clearly been phased out. Um, and then he's brought in Mariah Welsh, Amos, and Amos on permits. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So, so that's like almost the, the so it's like he started it. It's not really been communicate. I, I think that I think I think communications are huge missing piece at the club. Like, I think they tell us enough stuff. And then, so then you get folk making the rain minds up. Mm -hmm. And folk making the rain, well, that's why. Or they hear a whisper and they make a wee bad, a wee bit one. It was like last week, came in, fucking managers getting sacked and all that. And it was, and it was all just sort of made up. And and it's like somebody started it and it's just fucking spiralled. And and that's what happens with, with anything. And it's like, just just tell us like what the what the plan is here. You know what? He's here for the next two years. You can fucking talk about sacking him. We're not fucking sacking him. That's what he's doing is he's bringing them in in the short term. His contract's coming out. The the ones that you keep moaning about, they're leaving, and we're building the team around day two. Yeah. And then we would all at least have an understanding of what the fuck the idea is. But is it does that happen? Fucking... Does that happen anywhere in football? I, I don't even pay attention. I don't know. Well, if we're going to be chucking things out there, we should be persevering. Aye. <laughs> but but tell us how to how. Oh, what I'm saying is that I don't know if other folk do it because I, I don't I don't pay attention. What what I'm what I'm, what I'm getting at is, uh, and I, I don't know if other clubs do it either. I'm just I'm not aware of it from the the stuff that I read. But you made the point earlier about I other folk more about the manager or other other clubs more about the players. Do we like? Are we going to be potentially, like you say, the pioneers that do this kind of thing, where we talk about this sort of stuff, or is it going to be folk voting with their feet again, or threatening to vote with their feet? Well, fuck that! I'm not going to fucking put up that shit for two years. I'm going to, I'm not going to buy a season ticket. Let's take in, try it. I'm up for it. Like I yeah. said, like I'm up for uh, different ideas, different solutions. Uh, right, we are out of time. Um... Thank you so much for sending in your talking points and apologies if we ever got to yours. You, you'll see if you watch on YouTube, we've, we've no cherry picked them. We literally just went through them in order that they, they came through. We will try to get to more at some point, I think. Um, if you managed to catch our phone in that we did on Thursday, we'll be repeating that. Um, we might do it again this, uh, this Thursday as well. These are, um, for, for participating in them, at least exclusive for subscribers. So if you are a subscriber and you'd like to come on and put your point across as uh, Martin, Dave, McBee, Raymond, um, who else do we have on? Jeff. Jeff, of course, um, uh, did on, on Thursday, then get in touch with us. You can DM us, you can tweet us, or you can email us at longbangers at gmail.com. Uh, you do need to be a subscriber, and when I say subs a subscriber, I don't mean like a, a YouTube subscriber. You need, you need to be a YouTube member or subscribe via hopefully our uh, Patreon. Um, they do get released to everybody as soon as we finish recording it. So once the show's over, it goes out to everybody. But if you're a subscriber, you get access to it live and you can come on and talk to us as well. Um, and if you want to sign up, go ahead and, and do that. Uh, in the meantime, thanks very much again. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, sorry, we've not got a top six uh, sort of uh, jubilant uh, episode for you. It was depressing and angry. Um, but I think that's probably how we're all feeling just now. Um, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.